Welcome to the online ministry of Faith Christian Fellowship. FCF is a dynamic word and spirit empowered church where faith and family meet. If you would like more information about our church or other media resources, please visit us at faithchristianfellowship.com. We hope you enjoy this message. You guys okay? Ephesians, praise the Lord. Ephesians chapter 6. We've been talking about the believer's authority and talking about... uh, how to reign with Christ in our life. How to reign with Christ in our life. And Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 says this. Finally my brethren. Be strong in the Lord in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. But against principalities. Against the powers. Against the rulers of the darkness of this age. Against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore take up the whole armor of God. That you may be able to withstand the evil day. And having done all to stand. Stand therefore. Having girded your waist with truth. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness. And having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all taking the shield of faith. With which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation. The sword of the spirit which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Being watchful to this in with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. <clears throat> so we've talked about a lot of stuff in the last couple of weeks. And I don't have time to, to go back and teach all of that because we'll, we'll get bogged down again. But I, I want to I draw your attention to verse 10 here. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. The Amplified actually says, be pa- empowered by our union with Christ. You know, it, it is... It, it makes a difference when you have the right mentality and have the right attitude. And when you think you're defeated, listen, you'll never stand up to the enemy. And that's what this whole series is about. You and I standing up against the things that's coming against our homes, coming against our family, coming against our community, the things that we're seeing every day. Believers have to stand up and use their authority that they have in Christ to stand against the wiles of the devil. So you've got to be empowered with your union. When you understand who you are, when you understand that you're in Christ and you understand that you're with Him and He's in you and you're in Him and you're one. That's what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, that, that we're one spirit with the Lord, that, 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 we're, that, we're, we're, that we're sharing the throne with Jesus, that we're heirs and joint heirs with Christ. This is the Word of God. This is what the Scripture says. So when you and I start to understand these things, it empowers our union. It empowers us to go forth. It empowers us to stand up. Amen. Now in Romans chapter 5 verse 17, which has been a linchpin for us as we've moved forward. But uh, it says this in Romans 5 17. For by one man's offense, death reigned through the one much more. Those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. The Amplified says you'll reign in life as kings by the one, Jesus Christ. How many of you want to reign as kings? Amen. That's what you and I are called to do. We're kings and priests unto God. That's what the scripture says in Revelation 1.6. You are called to reign with Christ. You're called to rule with Christ. You're called to, 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 to operate in power and authority on this earth. Now, look what it says real quick here. It says, you've got to receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Grace and righteousness allows you and I to reign. Now, there's a lot of people that know enough just to be saved. I made this statement on Wednesday night. Many people repent enough to be saved, but never repent enough to see the kingdom. So there, there is folks out here, and you could be one sitting in this, in this, in this uh, sanctuary today, and this is, there's no condemnation. I just want to help you. But you say, well, I'm saved, but I still feel defeated, and I still feel worthless, and I still feel unworthy. And See, that's a sin consciousness. That's the, that's the consciousness of Adam, not Jesus. Jesus is the second Adam. The first Adam has that type of consciousness, fear. When sin came, what happened? Immediately, Adam ran from God. Fear, hiding. But see, the new man that understands a renewed mind, a person that has a renewed mind, understands righteousness. 
And see, righteousness and understanding righteousness puts you and I in a position now to rule and reign. That's what he says. Through the abundance of grace, that's salvation, and the gift of righteousness, understanding that you have been given a free gift of righteousness, which means what? That I'm in right standing with God. That's what righteousness means, that you're in right standing with God. Whether you pray three hours this morning, or you pray three minutes, or you prayed no, no time. Whether you yelled the kids coming down the road and you and your wife got in a fight, it doesn't matter. Listen, the Bible says you're righteous. Now, do I advocate that? No, I don't. <laughs> are you kidding me? Yeah, I'm, I'm saying this. People are so fruit conscious, they aren't root conscious. See, when you get root conscious, the fruit starts to come. See, there's fruits of righteousness. How you do that? Understand who you are in the root. And when, the, when you get your eyes on the root, all of a sudden the fruit of righteousness starts to, starts to come about in your life. He said you reign in life. I'm talking about authority. The, reason, the way you and I can operate in authority is understanding that what salvation, see grace, see that's, we can make it easy, God's riches at Christ's expense. We've heard that, right? God's riches at Christ's expense. G-R-A-C-E. God's riches at Christ's expense. That means I have access to God. That means I have access to the throne. See grace, see, for by grace are you saved through faith and, and that not of yourself, right? Not of works lest any man should boast, right? It's a gift from God. Right, so he said, I'm going to put you in a place of position that you can draw from the heavenly resources that you have. Whether you draw on or not, you got to, you, you, listen, you have a plan in heaven. I mean, it's just, like, it's just like the health care plan or whatever. Whether you use the benefits or not, they're there for you. They're there for you. So grace puts me in the position. But righteousness allows me to draw from the provision that my position provides. Is that making sense to you? See, grace puts me in a position in Christ. But righteousness now begins to allow me to understand some things. That way I can draw the provisions of Christ and release the provisions now in and through my life. Let me just show you this. Go to Isaiah real quick. Isaiah 54. This is not up on the screen, I don't believe. But you can follow me, Isaiah 54. Look what it says right here in verse 14. Dear Jesus, help me. This is a really, really key scripture, actually. It's very, very key. It's a very big key. It says, in righteousness, you shall be established in righteousness you shall be established the word established here in the Hebrew means anchored in righteousness you shall be anchored the Greek word also or the Hebrew word also means arranged in righteousness you shall arrange your whole life has to be arranged with a righteous consciousness and not a sin consciousness. The minute that you and I start checking into Adam's mindset, I'm talking about the, that's what sin consciousness is. It, it's, it's, it's a feeling of guilt, inferiority, uh, unworthiness. Like, you know what, I, who am I to stand up to the devil? And who am I to rebuke the enemy? And, and you know what, I ain't nothing but an old sinner saved by grace. Come on, are you kidding me, man? Don't, don't put, listen, that, the cross was a high price for you and I. And you ain't a sinner. I said, hey, you ain't a sinner anymore. You are a saint. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Quit seeing yourself below that. The Bible says you've been bought with a price. With the precious blood of Jesus. It's a high price. You got, listen, you got, you got Christ's blood on your head. You've not been redeemed with things like silver and gold, the scripture says. But with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Wow. No money, money, can, no money can buy that. He said, be established in righteousness. Now look what starts to happen. Because you get established in righteousness, what starts to happen? You shall be far from what? Oppression. For you shall not fear. And from terror, for it shall not come 
Because you get established and anchored and start arranging your life by righteousness and your right standing with God, knowing that I can come before. This is what righteousness means. Listen to what it says. To render innocent, to vindicate, to acquit, to be in right standing before God without any sense of inferiority, condemnation, or guilt. It also means to stand before the powers of darkness to command and enforce the victory of Jesus. You'll never stand and enforce the victory of Christ with your authority if you don't know about righteousness. Because if you have a guilt conscience, if you have a, a, an, a, an unworthy conscience, you're all condemned and, and, and you're walking around with all this guilt and condemnation, you will never, ever, 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 ever stand up to the devil. Because you'll think, who am I? Who am I to do that? I'll leave that up to the preacher because you know what? I didn't read my Bible this week. Now listen, you don't want to be a stupid Christian. <laughs> Sorry. Maybe I need to rephrase that one. But you don't want to be a Christian that's ignorant. Let's just leave it like that. That's a better way to say it. It's the truth. You don't want to be a Christian that's ignorant. Because the minute you start getting, listen, the enemy take advantage of you. When, you. when you don't know the word, the enemy now can take advantage of you. You can't discern right and wrong. I need to be someone that is astute in the word. I need somebody that knows. I need to be somebody that knows the word. So I've only been saved now for two months. Well, praise the Lord. We all started two months. Quit trying to compare yourself to somebody else. You just run your race and you get yourself in that book and you let line up on line, precept upon precept, line up on line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. All of a sudden it starts coming into view. I promise you, it will happen. The Word of God changes your life. It'll change your life. Now, so i got to understand. Now look what it says in, in verse 17. We like this one. We quote it, right? Because I'm established in righteousness. Now look what it says in verse 17. <clears throat> no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall what for this is the heritage this is the inheritance of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is from me says the Lord What's he saying? He said, listen, they can't stand, they can't, you can't stand and condemn anything outside of Jesus. But in Christ, that's my righteousness. He's, un, he's imputed his righteousness to me. And now I can stand up now and I can condemn the things that's coming against me. But it won't happen if you're not established in righteousness. I'm going to make a statement here and you want to write this one down. You'll never be any more righteous now. You'll never be any more righteous than you are right now. Nope. You get to heaven, you'll just be just as righteous there as you are here. Now you say, well, Pastor, I don't believe that. We're sin. We got we got sin. I didn't say we we're perfect. I didn't say we we're perfect. Listen, in your spirit, you're made righteous. You don't, you don't become, you don't listen, when I got born, I was born a boy. I wasn't born a girl, I was born a boy. My girls were born girls. Right? That's the way you're born. Right? But just because my little, let's say little Anna, at six years old, she's a woman. Just like my wife's a woman. But see, my Anna needs to develop into becoming a woman. Still woman, just not developed in it. That's why the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.20, it says this. He that knew no sin, 5.21. He that knew no sin became my sin that I might be made the righteousness of God in him. Right. When I got born again, I was made righteous. That's right. I don't have to work to become more righteous. Preach. I'm already righteous. I just need to develop my righteousness. I, just like Anna, she has to develop into womanhood. She's fully woman. She just needs to develop into her womanhood. So are you getting, getting what I'm saying? So you can be one hour in the Lord or 100 years in the Lord. You are righteous by the blood of Jesus Christ and Him alone. 
Now the difference between you and them, it could be you just need, you're needing to grow into your righteousness. You need to have an understanding of your righteousness. Remember what the scripture says, be established in righteousness. Now, now look with me, go with me real quick to Romans. You guys all right? Romans 1.16. It just came across my mind. Romans 1.16. We'll look here in verse 16 and 17. So as much as is in me, I'm ready to preach the what? The gospel. The good news. The gospel. Some people need that. Come on. Someone needs the gospel. The gospel to you who are in Rome also. For I'm not ashamed, verse 16, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it's the power of God to salvation to everyone who believes. To the first for the Jew and also for the Greek. For in it. What's the it here? In the gospel. For in the word. For in that book that you're, that's in your hands right now, or the iPad or what you're looking at, we're looking at it off of this screen. For in it, for in the gospel, for in the word, the righteousness of God is revealed. How do you understand about your righteousness? You put your face in the book. Facebook. You put your face in the book, and this is where righteousness is revealed to you. He says, well, I want to understand my righteousness. Get in the book. Because when you start seeing, not some religious thinking, not some religious teaching. I'm, not ta I'm talking about what the Word of God says. And you put your eyeballs on that Word and you read that Word and you meditate on that Word. Something starts to happen on the inside. You start understanding who you are and the stinking thinking starts to leave. The Adam's thoughts, you know, the, the weakness and inferiority and condemnation and guilt gets wiped away. And the, and the mind of Christ starts to come on the inside of us. That's what starts to happen. For in it. Now notice what happened when I start. For in it the rights of God is revealed from what? Living from saving faith to living faith. See I told you there's two different types of people. There are some folks that just had faith imparted at salvation. That's all. They, they, just, know about, they just know about going to heaven. But the scripture, wants, the scripture seems to tend to tell us that God's trying to move us from faith. To a living faith. To a faith that's alive. A faith that's active. A faith that will move mountains. Come on somebody. I'm talking about somebody that knows who they are. Will stand up and begin to decree and declare to a mountain. And begin to speak the word to a mountain. See that's somebody that knows who they are in Christ. Most people run away from the mountain. Instead of to it. Are you with me? So we have to understand this. Understand that we reign in life. Through grace and righteousness. The way that re the word reign there means to rule or to have authority. The way that we have authority in this life is through grace and through righteousness. Understanding grace, understanding salvation and what is available to me. And also understanding my righteousness that I can step into the moments and release the, the, the provision of heaven through my life. So when it's time to pray for somebody, don't look me up. Now, listen, I love, call me, please call me. If you're having an issue, please call me. I love to pray for you. But if somebody's there, man, this time, listen, I'm not going to be here at 2 o'clock in the morning sometimes. Well, I can't get this done without, you know, without 5,000 people to pray. And most generally, we call people to pray because we don't want to pray ourselves. Now, do I believe in agreement? Absolutely. But I'm saying to you, don't, make it, don't let that become an excuse for you not to stand up and rebuke the enemy, to begin to speak to a mountain, begin to... T Are you with me here? I'm trying to move you and move this church into a culture to think about, listen, I have the kingdom of God in me, and I can release the kingdom of God no matter where I'm at. So I'm at work. Listen, listen, someone, someone, something's going on at work, and you've got the opportunity to step into the moment. But if you have this attitude, well, I just, I can't pray. And you know what, dear God, I, you know, I mean, I hadn't read my Bible one time this week. 
I only know two scriptures. The name of Jesus alone is enough. And God honors people that step out in faith. So when you step into the moment and you step out in faith, something starts to happen. Come on, this is somebody that knows who they are. Do you have Jesus living on the inside of you? Then guess what? He's wanting out. He's just wanting out. So the Apostle Paul said in Ephesians chapter 6, he's finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord, the power of his might, right? Go back there real quick. Let's go back there. I've got get, to gotta get going. Praise the Lord. What we're going to do this th- today, we're going to we're gonna, we're gonna preach to about 1.30, and then we're going to take a little break, and then we're going to come back in again. Some of you said, dear God, please no. I already felt that prayer coming at me. I bind that spirit. I bind that in the name of Jesus. I, You guys are amazing. I want you to know that. I love you guys. You guys are amazing. I'm telling you. I told Annie last week, I said, I can't preach. I'm telling you, I can't preach there. I just can't. Because I can never get done. <laughs> you guys pull it from the, the toenails. This is so good. If you can't preach in this church, you need to find you another field. I promise you. <laughs> Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Now look what he says. Put on the whole armor of God. You have to do this. Put on the whole armor of God that you can stand against the wiles of the devil, right? That's what it says. So number one, be empowered by our union. Number two, we talked about this last week, live fully aware and fully prepared. Live fully aware and fully prepared. So put on the whole armor of God, right? So you can stand against the wiles of the devil. Verse 12, so don't wrestle against flesh and blood, right? It's not a spiritual, this is a spiritual battle. Quit. Quit thinking your battles with people. Quit thinking your battles with natural situations. There's a spirit realm that is activated. That, that's, that there's, there's something going on in a realm that you cannot see. There's something going on in a realm that you cannot see. And you don't fight battles from the natural to the spirit. You fight your battles from the spirit to the natural. Are you with me here? So our primary problem is not of human origin, but of an invis- but with an invisible enemy. There's a spirit world. Amen. Number three. This is what we're going to keep on now. The third thing. How do I reign in life with Christ? Number one, be empowered with our union. Number two, be fully aware, fully prepared. Number three, stand our ground. Stand our ground. Stand your ground. Because in verse 13 and 14, it says, Therefore take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand that evil day, and having done all to stand, what? Stand. So there, it, it's, it's alluding to a stance that has to be a continual stance. It, it's, it's a stance that almost like, you know, when all else is failing around you, you've got to continue to stand. Too many people are, are, are fair-weather Christians. Far too many people are, 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 are fair-weather Christians. So, so we're standing to, ref, we're, we're refusing to, to accept the enemy's attack. Now let me tell you something. The, just because you rebuke him once, or you come at something once, it doesn't mean that situation is automatically bound at that moment. Jesus rebuked the enemy three different times. He said, it is written, it is written, and it is written, and then he left. So it's telling me that there's sometimes we got to take a continual stance when we don't see anything happening. Stand your ground. In James chapter 4, verse 7, we went over this last week, it says this, it says, submit yourself unto God, resist the devil, and he will flee from God you quit asking God to do something about the devil you'll hear from heaven I already have 2,000 years ago I beat the devil over the head with a big stick (laughs) the cross It's already taken care of. So we're asking God, take care, take care, take care of the devil for me. 
Lord, just get the devil out of my life. Are you kidding me? You are a believer. He's representing you in heaven. You're representing him on earth. So do something about it. He says, submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. The word resist means an act of opposition. I won't, now look what it says. Submit yourself unto God. Have an act of resistance against the devil. An act of resistance against the devil. Now I think this is interesting because the word devil in the Greek is the word diabolos. And listen what this means. The word devil in the Greek is the Greek word diabolos. And it means this. To repetitiously throw something to penetrate it. To repetitiously throw something to penetrate it. Now we understand the vernacular that Paul's using in Ephesians 6. When he talks about the fiery darts. He keeps coming. He's a persistent person. He's persistent. And he keeps why? I mean, it's like it's like he just keeps pecking, 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 pecking. It's the woodpecker. I mean, that's what this word I repetitiously throwing and trying to penetrate and trying to gain access. He's always trying to gain access. So that means I need to have an active stand. I need to continually stand against the devil. And when you fortify one place up, listen, I'm not trying to give the devil airtime. I promise. I hate doing that. But I love broadcasting and he's defeated. And listen, it's just like a good basketball team or football team or baseball team or whatever. They go and they have scouting reports against, their, against the opponent for a reason. They're trying to see the weaknesses and what they can exploit. And the devil's got a game plan. He's been watching people for since the beginning of time. So we got to have an act of resistance against the devil. That's number three. Number four. If you notice in Ephesians 6 verses 17 and 18, it starts talking about the armor. And then he starts talking about the word of God. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the, number four, use your weaponry. Use your weaponry. Use your weaponry. Go with me to Matthew chapter 5, or I'm sorry, 8. Can I get a good amen? I'm going to show you here in the next few minutes just how to use your authority. Yep, Matthew chapter 8. That's it, man. I love the enthusiasm for folks that said, I'm just going to say, hey, if you got a green thumb, and I heard somebody, we love you, praise the Lord. <laughs> Glory to God, there's a big sheep back there. We love to have your help. We love the enthusiasm. We're ha we, have, we have parties, I don't know if you guys realize, we have parties here every single Friday and Saturday. Come and find out. <laughs> Man, people bring in, like, you know, bring all their stuff and they're excited. I mean, they even got people wearing these crazy collar glasses and they dress real funky. I mean, I, mean, I don't know what it is. I just know, look what's going on there. They got these, some of them dress up in different types of overalls. I mean, I've never seen anything like it before in my life. It's a crazy party. All right, get signed up for the mowing team. <laughs> I'm not going to say what just came across my mind. All right, keep that. <laughs> All right, five, let's look what it says. Now, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. Now, I want you to realize something. This is not a man that's a Jewish man. This man is a Roman. 
He's not even in covenant with God. Now look what happens. And Jesus said, I will come and heal him. Verse 8. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. But only speak a word. And my servant will be healed. Now look. 4. Verse 9. 4. Conjunction, junction. What's your function? 4. I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Surely I say to you, I have not found such great faith No, not even in. What was he saying? He said, this man understands the kingdom of God more than you guys that have a covenant with me and ought to understand it. He said, this man is a military man and understands how authority operates. And he calls this man having great faith. People that are operating in authority are people of great faith. Listen, church. Well, that's not me. It is you. You have great faith on the inside of you. And when you operate in authority and you stand up and you begin to rebuke the devil and you rebuke fever and you rebuke sickness and you stand, listen, that's a person of great faith. The scripture identifies that person, a person of great faith. Now notice what he said. He said, I'm going to come and heal him. And the centurion said, no, I understand how this all operates. I'm a man under authority. I'm a man, I'm a Roman, I'm a Roman centurion. All of Rome is backing my, he's, it's, they're backing my word. All of Rome is backing my word. Therefore, I just t- give people under me the orders. And they do it because they understand the authority that I have and who's backing me. Now listen, this is a, you say, well, how, how do I use my weaponry? You use your words. He said, listen, this is how authority operates. Authority operates by words. The man knew it. He's speaking terminology. He was speaking military th- terminology. He said, authority operates like this. I just give the orders for the people that's under me. He said, I recognize Jesus. You're a man that's under authority. And everything's under your feet, Jesus. So therefore, just speak the word. It's going to happen. Come on, somebody. You're talking about you and I. How do you and I operate in authority? The Bible says, submit yourself, therefore, unto God. First, I got to get under authority for me to operate in authority. You can't be going out here and, and doing whatever you like and, 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 and trying to. You got to get under God's authority. You got to get under His word and let that word come through your life. Speaking the word. Once I get under authority, now I can resist the devil and he'll flee from me. Why? Because the devil understands authority, he sees that. And Jesus said, A man. That wasn't even in covenant. Had great faith because he understood how authority operates. How do I release authority? You release authority through your words. I want to say something. I don't want to make anybody mad. Listen, the devil wants to keep you silent. I'm not saying, I understand God, I understand God hears prayers in my head. I I believe that. The devil don't know what you're thinking. See, the, the reason that you're not speaking is because you still have sin consciousness. Because you got fear. Well, I don't know how to pray. You got a big book right here. And it's full of prayers. It's full of word. All you got to do is get this thing in your heart and get it in your mouth and start speaking it. Well, Pastor Paul, no, I'm just telling you, man, you can, you can leave it, take it. You can indifferent. I, I'm just telling you, Jesus said a person of great faith will release their faith through their mouth. They'll release authority through their words. Your words have power. And I know you know this. It's legal. It's a legal thing, church. It's a legal thing. 
God cannot do anything on earth unless we come in agreement with him on the earth and release his. That's why he's given us the word. This is his will. Why is he giving the word to you and I? Because he wants you and I to release his will on the earth. And the will's got to get in our hearts and it's got to get in our mouth. The devil understands this stuff. But most folks aren't established in righteousness. They're established in sin consciousness. They've received the grace of salvation, but they've never understood. They've got the gift of righteousness. They've just never understood their righteousness. Amen. Are you with me here? No, just let me give you a couple more. You say, well, I don't know if I believe that. Revelation 12, 11. Right? And the enemy was defeated. By the what? They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And the word. See, the blood puts you in the pole position. Now, I want you to write this one down. The blood puts you in the pole position. But your testimony will put you in victory lane. God can position you in the pole position. He can posi- he's, already, he's already positioned you in Christ. <clears throat> but when you and I start understanding that my confession and what I'm saying is leading me into the victory, things change. So what I do, Pastor Paul, when the enemy starts coming to you, let me just give it, just, just break it right down, okay? Let's, he comes knocking on all of our doors. Come on, he's a UPS man. I'm, oh, no, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> Didn't mean that, but... <laughs> He's like a UPS man. There's a lot of good. We have a great UPS guy here. Sorry. It was nothing against UPS. He comes bringing the the bag of goods. What are you going to do? You better understand something about authority. How does authority operate? Through my word. See, there's many. through, 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 through Through confession, through praise. Through prophetic declarations. You know when we were. I felt that this morning as we were. You are the way. You are the truth. There's just something that was lighting up the room. Could you sense it? Could you sense how it shifted? I mean be, be, pay attention to these types of things. You felt the shift in the room. You got to be real sensitive to that. Well there was something that was going on. You was prophetically, you were standing as a priest unto God and you were lifting your hands saying you are the way, you are the truth, and you are the life. Listen, it just wasn't you that was hearing that or the person beside of you. Listen, there was principalities. (coughs) There was powers. There was things that was shifting in a community because someone was declaring the goodness of God, the truth of God, the way of God, right? The life of God. Something was shaking. Why is that? Because people that understand their authority stands as kings and priests lifting their hands to God, releasing the kingdom of God into the earth. God has to have your voice. That's why the devil wants you silent. Silent Christians are casualties. Well, that one went over like a ton of bricks. But listen, I- I'm telling you this because, listen, there's no condemnation. But please, man, we're giving you opportunities during services to declare truth over your life. That's why you sing. Won't sing very good. Well, the Bible says make a joyful noise. If you can make a noise, then sing. Who cares? I remember one time I heard Tommy. I was, I was over... <laughs> I've told this story. When I was sitting at the light over at Liberty, Liberty Square. It's been back several years ago. Tommy had that blue car. Remember the little small blue light blue car? I think it was. Maybe he was in the green truck. And man, you, I was sitting there coming back from Taze Valley going towards Winf- Winfield. Right there where the Applebee's was. I was, standing, I was at that stoplight. And all of a sudden I looked up. Here come low rider. <laughs> Tommy. And man, he had the wind down, brother. And he was just belting it out. I loved it, man. He was shaking things right there. I I remember sitting at the light here, and I said, boy, he's going at it. Look at him there. That's good. Use your weaponry. 
Use your mouth. The sword of the Spirit, which is the what? The Word of God. Right? The Bible says the Word is a sharp, two-edged sword. The word sword actually is the word diastomus. It means two mouth. Two mouth sword. Dia meaning two, stoma meaning mouth or opening. Well, what are we talking about, Pastor Paul? Two mouth. God spoke it. That's one edge. The other edge is our mouth. Are you with me here? Use your weaponry. Use your weaponry. Use your authority. Jesus said what? Speak to the mountains. It's a spiritual principle. Spiritual principle. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was out form and void. And darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the deep. The Spirit of God was in the middle <coughs> of the darkness and confusion. Well, why wasn't He creating? He's God. Is Holy Spirit as much God as Jesus is? Is Jesus as much as God as the Father is? It's the Trinity, right? The three in one. So why wasn't the Spirit of God creating? Because nobody had spoken words. And that's why the Bible says, then God said, let there be, and the light was. You pave a runway for the Spirit of God to land. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Don't put God in a holding pattern. Provide him a runway, church. Everybody in this room, listen, you're kingdom kids. You're the rights of God in Christ Jesus. Come on. You have a mouth. You got the word in you. I don't care if you got one word, you speak one word. I, if you, one word from God changes everything. Just speak what you know. And listen, get in the book. If you're facing a situation, get your nose in the book. Find you some promises. Put them on an index card and just carry them around for, for it with you. And listen, when the enemy starts coming, <coughs> and he's whispering in your ear, sorry. <coughs> whispering in your ear, then you know what you do? You pull out the index card, and you say, no, hold on a second. You sit down right here a second, because guess what? <coughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to let you hear me for me a minute. I've been hearing enough from you all last night. You kept me up three, I mean, kept me up almost all night for, with worry and fear. So guess what? I'm stopping fear, and I want you to sit down right now. No, 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 you are, no, you're not going out the door. Stand up right here. I want you to sit down. I, I want to hear, I want you to hear what the Word of God says about my situation. Wham! And start speaking to it. Well, I don't see anybody there. See, you don't have eyes to see it. There's a real level. There's a real, there's a real realm that you cannot see. It's why the Apostle Paul said, you don't fight against flesh and blood. There's a spiritual realm that's around me. And you've got to get that tenacious. You've got to have eyes to see it. And you tell the devil to sit down. And you're going to hear from me. Amen. Use your weapon. I'm going to close this down. Listen to me. Let me give you this one. Hey, hey, uh, Eric, pull up Proverbs 16.10. Look what this says. And then we're going to. Close it. <clears throat> Proverbs 16.10. Look what this says. Thank you. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Isn't this a wonderful woman right here? Isn't she pretty and beautiful? <laughs> Amen. You got it there? Go to the King James. A little blind. I don't like that one as well. Go to the King James. <laughs> Sixteen ten in the King James. Six uh, Proverbs sixteen ten. That's ten ten. We're close. Six chapters away. Hey, and look what it says. A 
divine sentence is in the lips of the king. A divine sentence is in the lips of the king. What's a sentence? It's a verdict. Who's kings in this place? I hope everybody in the room raise their hand. Because the Bible says he's made us kings and priests. There's a divine sentence in your lips. There's a verdict. There's a verdict that needs to be read. And the word is your verdict. Let it be your final word. Final answer. Final answer. Amen. Now go with me real quick to Hebrews chapter 10. <clears throat> I'm going to close this down. Hebrews chapter 10. Look what this says. I'm going to stir you up to go. <clears throat> operate in your authority. <clears throat> Hebrews <clears throat> chapter 10. I'm going to start in verse 12. Anybody else hot or are you good? Who can say I'm hot? Yes, that's, that's the majority. Turn that thing on. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I saw enough hands go. We had more than one. <clears throat> Where am I at? Uh, Hebrews ends well. <clears throat> now look what it says. But this man... After he had offered one sacrifice for sin. This is powerful. <laughs> Jesus' sacrifice was so sufficient. Just one sacrifice at all it took to wipe out all of our sins. After he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever. Sat down at the right hand of God. Now let me ask you guys a question. Who's sitting with him? Ephesians 2.6 says that. We're seated with him. But if you didn't get that, you need to go back and listen to what I taught the last two services. Verse 13. From that time. What? From what time? From the time he sat down. Right. What's he doing? Waiting till his enemies are made his what? Come on, church. It's already done. I need you to operate in the authority that's been given to you. Quit praying to me to do something with the devil. I've already sat down. It's finished. It's done. And now I'm expecting you to use your authority. Jesus, ha listen. Jesus conquered. But because he conquered doesn't mean he has a... Sub he's conquered the enemy. But just because he's conquered, the enemy still needs to be subdued. Listen to what I'm saying. He conquered him 2,000 years ago. But the subduing or the subjecting or putting him under that victory is up to you and I to do. He's already conquered, but he's looking to you and I to subdue it. Hey, I'm just lost my mind. Andrew looks at me like, I've been trying to tell you. <laughs> All right, fix this real quick. Sorry. I'm very sorry. It'll be good. Oh, it's all right. It'll be okay. We'll get it. <laughs> nah, I'm good. That'll be fine. Should just shuck the coat anyway, right? Just. All right, listen, I'm, I'm closing. Listen. So, so Jesus conquered. <clears throat> it's already done. But it's up to you and I to subdue. He's expecting till his enemies are made his footstool. What do you put on a footstool? Even the, listen, I'm going to use this term and you guys want to know what, even the lowest, I'm going to say the lowest, I'm going to say the lowest. 
And I don't mean that in a bad way. So listen to my heart. Even the lowest member of the church is exalted far above all principality and power. So I'm asking you. I'm telling you, this is the key. I feel it in my heart about a week ago. I felt like the Lord spoke to me. He said, this is the key for the end time revival. It's people understanding who they are and people operating in their authority. Yes. And then the glory of God's going to fill the earth. Amen. Can I show you one more? Yeah. Yeah. I, I promise I'll, sh I'll shut up after this one. C go with me to uh, Luke's gospel. Luke chapter, see if I want to go there. No, go to Matthew 10, sorry. That's a good one too. But. And then you can find Luke 10, 19, uh, 10, 19 for me real quick, and then just, we may go up a few. Look what it says right here. Man, it's good. <clears throat> verse, let's start in verse 35. Matthew 10 35 actually 9 35 all right 9 35 I'm settling on that can I get a 36 36 37 37 give me 37 38 38 Brian I got you there hallelujah 9 35 then Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people Jesus had a teaching preaching and healing ministry but when he saw the multitudes he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary scattered like sheep having no shepherd then he said to his disciples look what he said the harvest is truly plentiful, but the labors are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out labors into his harvest. Now, we've, we'll stop right there, but look what the next word is in 10.1. And. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? It's to hook it in. He said the harvest is depending on this. And when he called his 12 disciples, he gave them power. He gave them, the word power is the Greek word exosia, it's authority, it's not dunamis, it's authority. He said, I've given them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. The harvest is depending on you and I understanding our authority. I'm going to tell you what this region needs. They don't need no church service. And they don't need another church. They need people that's going to demonstrate the power of God. That's what they need. Well, that's where the preacher. Wrong answer. You are a believer. These signs will follow them that believe. Believers. Thank God for preachers. And we understand there's a place for all that. that the, the, you know, the, the far as structure in the church. I get all that. There's anointings that come with the fivefold ministry gifts. I get all of that. But listen, we've relegated this whole thing to a preacher when God wants to make it about his body. Amen. Now look what he says. In, I'm done. I've got to walk away. Luke 10. Go up. Go up some. Uh, go back about four or five scriptures. Oh boy. Let's see if we can get there. Five scriptures. Something like that. We'll start somewhere up there. Go on up above that. One more. Well, yeah. Well, look what he said. Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works. Now take key to this. Take, take key to this and listen. And this is the key. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they have, would have repented a long ago sitting in sackcloth and ashes. Look what he said. Go back up again. He said, you know what's going to turn a city to God? The mighty works. You know why Jesus empowered us to go do mighty works? Not so we can have a great church service. But to transform a city, a community, and a region. He said, Whoa. he said, if the mighty works which were done in you, which were done in Tyre and Sidon, you guys would have repented a long time ago. Repentance, listen, the mighty works is to get people to repent. When they start seeing the power of God, they'll say, dear God, I want that. 
Dear God, what, what is going on with you? Dear God, look what's going on around you. Look what he said. Now, we can read on now, verse 14. Uh, but it would be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. Click. And you, Capernaum, who are exalted to heaven, will be brought down to Hades. Click. And he who hears you hears me. He who rejects you rejects me. And he who rejects me rejects him who sent me. It's powerful, but 17. Then the 70. Now, look. Now, this is, now that was the, the scripture I showed you a minute ago in, in, Matthew, in Matthew 10 was when he, when he gave the 12. Okay, so we can say, well, that was, the, that was the 12. That was those special apostles. But if you go and read and study it out, now he's already commissioned the 70 and gave them the exact same command that he, what he gave the 12. Now they went out and started doing the works. And all of a sudden, then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. You have the power of attorney, man. you got the name of Jesus that's backing you up. You do. The power of attorney. He's given you his name. So the, they turned, had great joy. Woo! Now look what it says in verse 18. It gets better. I'm closing. I promise. This is going to be the great right hand punch. Then he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. You know, listen, listen, listen. What's he saying? He said, you guys are making a big deal out of nothing. He said, I saw Satan fall like Lightning from heaven. When he messed up, there was, listen, there was no Pasco, there was no collect two hundred. Listen, it was straight. He saw him fall like lightning. What was he saying? He said, The devil's no big deal. You're celebrating over things that are no big deal at all. Because this is just what believers do. Look what he says in verse 19. Behold, I give you authority to trample over on on serpents and scorpions. That's, that's That's a type and shadow of demons and the devil. To trample on serpents and scorpions. And over what? Some. Does it say some? It says over what? All the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. He said, you're making a big deal about nothing. He said, I've given you this authority. It's my authority. I saw him fall like lightning from heaven. But look what it says in verse 20. This is really the big deal. Nevertheless, you're not rejoicing this. That the spirits are subject to you. No big deal at all. But rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. What was he saying? He said, that's the big deal. That's the big deal. Now look, it gets, look, this is so cool. This is, you can see, you got to read your Bible. Just read it. It's so crazy. He said, that's the big deal. But look what he says in verse 21. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and the prudent. There's that wisdom of the world I've been talking about on Wednesday night. And revealed them to babes, even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. It says Jesus rejoiced. You know what the actual translation? He leaped for joy. So you can see Jesus going, oh, <laughs> yes, yes. You can see him getting there. He's, he's all cool, cool, calm, and collected. That's good, boys. No big deal at all. Saw Satan fall like lightning from the sky. They turned their head and he's like, yes, they're getting it. They are getting it. They are getting it. They are getting it. right? I believe it's what the Lord's doing over us today. He's leaping for joy because you're understanding your authority. Stand.